Hey guys, welcome back to Get the Job Done. I made a video here, it goes over the fry pump on an FMP345 fryer or an FPP345 fryer. Um, not a whole lot of difference between the two other than really the drain pan. The three, and it stands for three fry pots, so that if you had an FMP245, it would have two pots. I've got some good information in this video. I explained to you on how to reverse this fry pump to help unclog restrictions in it. It it saves a crap ton of time and especially it saves a lot of time in tearing apart a, a pump and motor and trying to get in there and, and work it free or disassembling it. It sucks. So I got some good information there. A note though, there is companies that attach automatic oil fill and disposal features onto these fryers and they got three-way valves on them. If you don't remove that valve out of the system and you turn that pump on backwards, it could uh, cause that valve to get stuck. So if you have a fryer that's hooked up by RTI, then there's a chance that you could ruin this valve. But if there's no extra electronics to help dispose or fill oil onto the fryer, then you shouldn't have a problem. Again, if you do, you want to disconnect those from the lines and make sure you angle the flex lines in the position and into a pan so you don't make a mess with the oil. So while I replace the pump in this particular video, I'm going to explain to you the colors of the wires, the numbers of the wires to help you reverse that fry pump. Also, Frymaster had changed over companies for their fry pumps. So it is very important that you use the correct bolts with this system. I go over that information in this video too, because if you use the wrong bolts, that new pump won't line up correctly and it'll actually jam up the new motor. So hopefully there's a lot of useful information in this video for you. Now always remember, I got one speed, and that speed is to get the job done. Let's check out this video. I'm doing a motor replacement, the oil oil pump motor. Uh, so we have the pump here, motor was sitting here. If you're somewhat familiar with Frymaster fryers, you already know about this. So I've, I've removed the four bolts and then removed all these screws. I use a right angle attachment for my screw gun. So I don't have to use a wrench in here, it's just a lot easier. So I drop the motor down, make sure you get the, the bolts right here and here. And they sh sent me a new style motor, so I'm just going to go over real quick the rotation of that new motor. This is the new motor. This, they changed the design, uh, or the manufacturer. They changed the manufacturer. So in this motor, we have a black wire here. This is the old style. If you ever have a clogged pump, this black wire here, it's number five. It's on the bottom post and you have this wire right here it is red should be number eight but if you want to re reverse this pump you just take this black wire and this red wire you just switch them plug them back in then you grab the oil return handle and just give it a quick little on off to have it spin backwards just for a second all you need is a second to free it up usually. And then once it's free, switch the wires back, put everything back together, turn it back on. It should run fine. So this new motor, it is the exact same way. So you have a black wire here. This, this wire right here is red. So you put the red wire where the black one is, the black one is where the red one is. Same thing. Walk over to the fryer. I always grab the oil pan, 
pull it out a little bit because oil is going to possibly come out the nipple that this plugs into. And I just grab the handle, just, just like that, just real quick. Click, off, on, off. And I only do that one time. If it doesn't free it, try it again. If it doesn't free it, try it again. If it doesn't free it, then maybe I'll let, let, it, let it sit a little longer in the on position. But generally speaking, it frees up in the first try. And then I go back to the front, or go back to the back, rewire it. Start it back up. It should be good. Now the reason why I'm replacing this motor is the pump that bolts onto here, it leaks. They're, they they all leak. They're, there's nothing to prevent them from leaking. And they built up beside this motor which made its way into the motor. So when I disconnected the pump off of the motor and I turned the power on, this would only spin ever so slowly and it was drawing high amperage and then it would trip the reset button in the back. And then you'd reset it, and it'd start all over again, run for a few seconds, and then trip because it's drawing too high of amperage. But I'm gonna put this new motor in, hook it up to the pump, make sure it spins the right way, and then uh, they'll be all set. All right, don't stop now. I hope that was some good information for you. But now I'm gonna talk to you about the installation of the new pump. With that installation of the new pump, I'm going to make a recommendation on how to change the wiring in it. So that if you do have to reverse this pump, it makes it a lot easier in the future. Also, this is where I tell you about the, the length of the bolts so you don't bind up that new motor and ruin the new motor that you just installed. So, don't forget to like the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the channel if you happen to be new. And click the notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming videos. All right, let's get back to it. While I'm wiring this motor back up, I'm actually going to take this black wire here. I'm going to put it on the top post where L1 would normally go, or L2, where L2 would normally go. Then I'll take the, the neutral wire on this and put it on the post where the black wire was. That way, on these older fryers, um, when you do go to reverse the motor, if you do it while it's inside the cradle underneath the fryer, it's just a lot easier to get to with your, your needle nose pliers to pull it up and switch it with that red wire than it would be to remove it where the neutral wire is at right now because it's just a, a plate that, that blocks it. So. I actually use these needle nose pliers, angled needle nose pliers, when I am trying to reverse these. But since this new motor it has a post that's a little bit higher, it'll make it a lot easier to get to to get those uh, terminals on those spades and switch them. So moving that black wire up just to make my life easier in the future. I want to give you a quick side note. So. The new pump comes with these bolts here. The old pump has four inch bolts. These should be three and a half inch bolts. If you use the old four inch bolts to screw the pump into the motor, it's going to hit a plate inside this motor and cause this motor to bind up. And then your, your motor's not going to work. So when you get these new bolts, Make sure you use these bolts. You don't want to screw yourself. If you happen to miss my last video, it's going to be on the Train Voyager unit. It's a, the model number is a YCD. And I'm going to go over the correct readings needed for the vacuum pressure on the induced draft motor so the gas valve operates correctly. It's very important to know that information so you can diagnose a bad inducer or a bad gas valve or maybe even a plugged screen on a heat exchanger. So again, hopefully that link is somewhere over there. I hope it works. If it does, click it. Enjoy the video. Alright, roll the credits!